Did you know you can take a boat from Europe to Africa? My name's Claire and I'm doing just that. I had a trip to Algeria planned and I didn't want to fly. So I took a bus from London to Paris, a train from Paris to Marseille, and then I boarded a 24 hour ferry from Marseille to Algiers as a solo female traveller. So what's the ferry like? And is it worth taking instead of a one hour flight? Let's take a look. Good morning from Marseille, France. I am getting a boat to Algeria today, um, but I'm currently in a bit of a pickle trying to find my terminal. To cut a long story short, Direct Ferries directed me to the wrong terminal, which I went to and it was very closed. And then the staff at that terminal told me I had to go to the other side of Marseille to actually get to the right terminal. Luckily, this terminal was a lot more open and I was able to check in and board the boat. I am on the boat and in my cabin. That was a bit of a procedure, but we got there in the end. So I think the plan is right now, I'm gonna have a little bit of breakfast because I didn't get a chance to eat anything at the hotel. And then I will find some coffee and use the internet for a bit. And then I'll show you around. So I went up to the deck to say goodbye to Marseille and to the entire European continent for over a month. It was a really lovely clear day, such nice weather and everyone was crowding on the back deck to watch the view of the French coastline disappear as we sailed into the Mediterranean. <laughs> And I walked back through the maze of hallways to ultimately find my cabin. Next stop, North Africa. So I'm back in my cabin now. I'm gonna be here for at least an hour and a half or so just to let my phone charge up. But while I'm here, I will do a quick room tour. So I paid 240 pounds for this entire ferry. Um, <laughs> this entire ferry, for this entire like I paid £240 in total. Now that included my ferry ticket and a cabin reservation price. So my ferry ticket was about £130-£140 and then the cabin reservation was just under just under £100, I believe, or just over, just over £100, around £100. Now, if I had been travelling with someone, then obviously it would still be the same price for the cabin. So this cabin can sleep up to four people. So it can work out a lot more cost effective if you're travelling with people. But um, I didn't think it was too bad, considering I was spending 24 hours on the ferry and I was literally going from one continent to another continent. <laughs> so as I said, they've made it up, so it's just like just made up for me. So I've got my bed here. So it's just a single bed and honestly, pretty comfy. Like, yeah, the mattress is quite soft. It feels like it will be a comfy mattress to sleep on. Not the biggest, but fine for me. And so we've got a little space here with some lights and some cup holders, which I guess is good in case it's a bit rocky. And then as you can see here, if there was someone else here, you'd pull this bed down and then that would make two beds and maybe this room does only sleep two people actually because I they doesn't look like more mattresses can go there so maybe actually they decided to just put me in a room with that can just sleep two people I guess that would make sense so here we've got a little dressing charging area my phone's on charge there. There's one plug, it's a Europe plug. We've got that charge there and it seems to be rapidly charging my phone. So that's good. And then it looks like there's a tiny little radio there. I don't know how old this boat is, but some of the features are a little bit old school. <laughs> it will never be as old school as the boat that I took across the Caspian Sea from Kazakhstan to Azerbaijan though. If you've not watched that video, go and check that out because that was a that was an experience. We've got the some, some more storage up there. Oh, and I didn't see that because I'm quite short, but the video just showed me that actually there's another plug up there. So that's good if I need to charge anything else. More storage here. There are three shelves. So can put plenty on those. I mean, more storage than I need, like I don't have that much stuff. And I do have a small sink here. So that's good for brushing my teeth and stuff like that. Ah, okay. So there's two ladders here. So these, so maybe they do put another other beds in. Huh, interesting. I don't know how that works. They don't come down from the ceiling, do they? 
<laughs> I don't know, but there's two more ladders here, so potentially there's actually could have four people in here, which would be a bit cosy. Two people would be okay. It's quite spacious. I think four people would be a bit cosy. Um, I mean, just me, this feels like there's loads of room. There's another shelf up here and more storage. There's a wardrobe just behind me. I just had a nap for two hours and I feel so much better. I was so tired. I was sitting there doing some work and I just couldn't keep my eyes open. I never ever nap unless I'm exceptionally tired. So I must have definitely needed it. But I'm gonna have some lunch now. I've got a bit of a spread here, um, consisting of some stuff I bought from Aldi yesterday and some leftovers from the takeaway I got last night. So I've got a range of dips. So I've got a Lebanese takeaway. So I've got a range of dips, some flatbread. And then from the shop, I bought Sanaga blue cheese, um, olives and sun-dried tomatoes. So I'm gonna eat those now. And then I'll probably go upstairs for a little bit, I think, and do a bit of work up there. Quick toilet check. These were the toilets that were right next to my cabin. There were your standard toilets and there was also a shower as well, which I didn't use, but it's good to know the facilities are there. I've been in my room working for a little bit more, but now I'm heading out and I'm just gonna walk around the whole boat and just make sure I've seen everything that it has to offer. So I think the first four levels are all for cars and then five, six, seven and eight are all like rooms and now I'm on the ninth floor so nine, ten and eleven are sort of more communal spaces. So let's go see what there is on the ninth floor. There were a few places to eat on board. There's a buffet restaurant, a more formal restaurant and a cafe. Although I would recommend if you have any kind of dietary restrictions to take your own food with you. On the 10th floor there is a snack bar which is where I got a coffee and a pan au chocolat earlier and there's also access to the outdoor area and on this room there is also a nursery, a children's play area and a prayer room. Then on floor 10 you can also walk around the whole of the boat on this kind of wraparound boat deck area. There is also a kennel here so if anyone who's travelling with a dog, oh I just said a dog, <laughs> anyone who's travelling with a dog can um, leave their dogs in the kennel. I just spent four euros 20 on an orangina and I'm not sure why. You know when you go to buy something and then it's way more expensive than you thought it would be and you just don't say actually no. It was in French as well so that was probably why I was just being awkward and not able to speak much French. Anyway I'm going to save my orangina now that I've spent so much money on it and yeah I'll just sit up in the in the sitting area, the bar area for a while so I'm on floor 10. I might go up to floor 11 and see if there's anything there but I think it's pretty much just the kennel. Don't think they'll let me in to see the dogs unfortunately but um, yeah I might go and just see what's up there and then I think I've seen the whole boat <laughs> to be honest. It's mainly cabins. After my overpriced orangina, I thought I'd go and check out the seating cabins. So if you don't buy a like your own private cabin, you get put in one of these and it's basically just a huge room with seats. They were fairly comfy, they'd be fine for the day, but I'm not sure if I'd want to sleep on them. They were very quiet though, there weren't many people in here at all. Honestly, when I say this boat was a maze, every single time I walked back to my room I seemed to go a different way. <laughs> There has been a very confused flight in my cabin and they're going to be even more confused when they fly out into Algeria and not France. <laughs> That's pretty much the boat. Yes, yeah, so there's just like one restaurant, one snack bar, a few areas to sit and then a few of those um, areas with chairs. But then to be honest, most of it are these sleeping cabins. I'm very glad that I got a sleeping cabin, especially after the night bus two nights ago and then I didn't get a full eight hours last night. So I'm going to sleep very well tonight. I'm very excited. And it's actually very quiet in these as well. It's nice. Yeah, I'm just going to do a bit more work now, just chill for a bit. And then at half six-ish, I think I'll venture up to see if there's any sunset colours. Just having my dinner. Just got this from Aldi yesterday. Um, it's called a Buddha bowl. I wouldn't quite call it a Buddha bowl. It's more... Uh, salad that's kind of half warm now but it's all right it's good to have some vegetables at least because i'm feeling a bit bloated so i'm just gonna have this and then i might i don't know what time the sun sets i'm guessing it'll be around seven so i think i might eat this and then go back up to the deck and see if i can see any any change in the sky or anything nice like that because when you're on a boat it's always a good idea to watch the sunset <laughs> time for another walk i'm not sure if it's dark yet i really had no idea what time it gets dark okay so it is still light but it doesn't really look like we're gonna get a sunset it looks very hazy i think the sun is setting just behind me 
you can't even really see it it's a little bit of pink there i think that's where the sun is and i think the sun is setting but it is so cloudy that unfortunately there's not really a mediterranean sunset tonight Although while I was walking around, I did find another room, which was like, it looked like a big like conference room or even like, like a big kind of cinema, but it was a bar and it had just like quite a lot of comfy seats scattered around and there were quite a lot of people in there just having a drink. So there you go. This part and the front of the boat is super windy. The back is quite sheltered. The back's all right, but this part is blustery. <sighs> I'm very tired, but I'm doing just one more walk around the boat see what the vibe is like in the evening um, it's nearly nine o'clock so I'm just I'm lost again this is such a maze but yeah I'm gonna just uh, just do a little walk around see what it's like see what the atmosphere is like and then I'm gonna go to bed and get a good night's sleep the boat wasn't up to much there were a few people on the deck there were a few people in the bars, a few people watching something on the screen, but that was about it. So I decided it was time to call it a night. Not much is going on really. A lot of people seem to be going to sleep and I think it's time for me to go to sleep as well. Oh, I am so happy to be in a bed right now. I, uh, I paid an extra hundred pound for this room and it was such a good purchase. <laughs> Cause it's just, just so much more comfortable. Um, like I showed you in the tour, there were seats and actually lots of people have um, taken their own like camping mats or blow up beds and like have like found a corner and like some people have like full size blow up beds set up um, which, to be honest, I probably would do, but um, not tonight. Not tonight. It's so nice to have a to have a room. I'm just gonna watch a bit of Netflix, I think, and then fall asleep probably as soon as possible. It's quite quite early, but I need all the sleep I can get, and I don't mind if I wake up early tomorrow because I will do a bit more walking around the boat, filming on the boat. Good morning. It is 8.29 French time. Algeria is one hour different, but I'm struggling to work out whether it's before or after. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get changed now and then I'm going to go to the information point and hopefully someone there will speak English because there's been lots of announcements but they're all just in French. My French isn't really good enough to understand announcements and things if it was written i could understand it but um yes yeah, so i'm gonna go to the information desk i think and hopefully someone there will speak english or at least be patient enough with my french <laughs> so i can find out what time i need to be out the cabin and what time like we actually arrive like whether i'm already on algerian time or something or what even windier on the deck this morning but it was looking really nice and sunny again so I had a little walk around the deck but I couldn't see any kind of land yet so the boat is delayed by either one hour or two hours I'm not sure exactly which because we so Algeria is an hour behind France but I think it means it's the same time as the UK but the guy at the desk told me that they were the same time zone, but I'm pretty sure that's not right. It's gonna be midday, either French time or Algerian time. And he said that I need to get out of my cabin at like 11ish. Um, so I've got a bit of time anyway, <laughs> regardless of whether it's Algerian or French time. And I do have a bit of internet and I, and I have a contact for the guy who's picking me up. So that's all good. So I'm glad I've sorted all of that out. Um, I also bought a pan of chocolat with my remaining euros. So I'm gonna have some breakfast, watch a little bit more Netflix and then get everything, start to get everything together. All right, so I bought a mango in French Audi yesterday. And the only thing I have to cut it is this wooden knife. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> Not very well. Oh, all right. I also have a Tupperware that I brought with me from home. A ba good backpacking tip, I always think, is to bring a Tupperware. 
because you can use it for a variety of purposes, including cutting mangoes. All right, I think I'm gonna be able to do it with this. Not the easiest, but. Et voila, we have some mango. All right. There we go, breakfast. I have just got dressed and packed, so I am ready to go. Um, we have one to two hours left. Not sure exactly how long. I'm gonna go up to the information desk again in a minute and see if they've updated the time. And also just go outside and see if I can see land, because that'll be an indicator of how far away we are. But um, I am ready to go, so that's good. And yeah, no, when we dock, I just need to go through customs and I do have a driver meeting me. Well, there should be an is there an announcement now i keep trying to understand these announcements but um, um, my listening french is not very good so i'm struggling a bit with them i really didn't want to miss the first glimpse of land so i went back onto the deck without my bags and tried to catch the first glance of it i could and eventually i started to make out the vague outline of the north african coastline right we are fast approaching algeria i'm really easy to get my bag but I want to uh, go and take some photos first and then, then I'm going to get my I've got back and my bed had already been remade and my bags were just low on the floor so I need to get them and go. I went to get my bags and then I came back up to see the coastline of Algiers in a lot more detail. Just like the day before, lots of people crowded round at the front of the boat to watch the view of Algiers as we sailed towards it. And it was really lovely to be able to slowly take in the city that I'd be spending a lot of time in over the next 10 days or so. As a foot passenger, I had to go through a secret side door of the boat to get off. And then I went through immigration. It was pretty easy because I'd already had my visa that had all been pre-approved. And then I found my driver and drove to my hotel. I have made it to Algiers, specifically to my hotel in Algiers. And I'm really happy to be here. It was interesting driving through the city. It looks very Parisian, very, you can really see the French influence here. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to spend uh, spending about 10 days in this country to see its highlights. I will be making some more videos of my time in Algeria. I'm going to do a video about my next few like solo days in Algeria so you can see what solo travel in Algeria is like. And I'll do a few videos of the actual tour that I'm going on next week as well. So stay tuned for all of those. I'll do a room tour in that video as well. I'm staying in a fairly nice hotel. I paid a little bit extra for it, but I wanted to make sure I was staying somewhere nice while I was here on my own. The boat I really enjoyed, really, really enjoyed it. It was it was really comfy. The bed was really comfy. It was nice having my own little cabin. And I just like traveling in that way. I just <laughs> not a huge fan of flying and I find it very satisfying to know that I got here overland so yeah I've officially overlanded to Africa so that's that's pretty exciting pretty happy with that I'm going to be writing a blog post with all of my best tips for the ferry so do check that out it should be in the description below and do stay tuned for my videos in Africa. So I've got 10 days in Algeria and then I'm heading down to Senegal and Gambia. So my next whole video series is gonna be, well, the first one is about Algeria and then there's gonna be videos on Senegal and Gambia. So do stay tuned for those. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it interesting. And I hope it's inspired you to take a ferry trip. Maybe maybe this one, maybe a different one. But honestly, I, I love a ferry. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.